we're going to get started. And if you have sensitive knees, have a blanket or a towel. And you can put the blanket or the towel about where your knees would land if you are coming into a hands and knees position. Um, if you want your camera on, I forgot to mention, turn your camera on and others will be able to see you. Otherwise, you can just turn your video off, um, but you'll leave yourself muted. And I'm going to put you all in my little, I can see you, I see you, Kwa Kwa, I see you, Alex, I see you, Nicole. Um, okay, so we're going to get started lying on the belly. And again, you'll want your blanket about here if you have sensitive knees. So when you come to lie down, let your forehead rest heavy on the earth. And then you'll reach your arms back by your sides. And at first, let the arms be really soft and the shoulders and the neck really soft. Relax your jaw. And then take a couple of deep breaths here into the low back and try to spread the backs of your lungs wide like wings. With each exhale, yield and descend a little more through your floor, especially if you're high up in, a, in an apartment building. Okay, and then keep breathing well, but you'll press your hands now, the palms of your hands into your outer hips. Um, for some of you, depending on the length of the arms, it might feel like your outer legs. And press your hands in firmly so that your arms sort of activate. And just notice if your shoulder heads collapsed to the floor when you did that. And roll your shoulder heads away from the floor like you're drawing your shoulder blades together on the back gently. And then press the center of your palms more into the outer legs. For me, it's landing right on my greatest, greater trochanter, which is the widest part of my legs. Take another breath like this. And then keep your right hand pressing firmly into the right leg, so much that the arm might fatigue a little bit. And you'll lift your left arm straight up and back behind you. And then keep lifting your left arm higher and higher as you reach it out to the side. And then very slowly send your left arm up alongside your left ear. Descend your feet, heavier feet down into the floor. Take a breath in and come to a back bend. Right hand pressing firmly into right thigh still. Take just one more breath here. Reach your heart forward and heavy the pubic bone. And then you'll lower your left hand down. The left arm is still long by your left ear. Plant your right hand by your right chest and you're just gonna use the right fingertips to help you roll over onto your left side body. Once you get there, bring your right hand right back onto the outer right leg and press firmly. And then lift your right leg up into your right hand. So it's gonna lift just like two inches off of your left leg. Good, and then just see what it feels like to turn the leg out. So you're gonna turn your right kneecap, your right toes up to the ceiling, that's external rotation, and then come back to neutral. Keep the leg really neutral and take five little pulses into the strength of your right hand. Keep breathing smoothly, just a little pulsing, three and two and one. Good, and then hold the leg up pressing into the hand, hand into the leg, and just memorize how this feels in your body. We'll use it later in half moon pose. Good. And then nice and slow, you'll just reach your right arm up alongside your right ear, reach your right heel longer than your left heel and get really long. So it's like you're in Ordva Hastasana, but you're lying on the side. Good, imagine someone's pulling your ankles away from your wrists. And one more breath, get really long. Okay, and then you'll roll forward onto the belly again. You can use your right fingertips to sort of guide you back smoothly. And then again, you'll reach your arms back behind you and squeeze your hands into your outer hips like a vice. Roll your shoulder heads away from the floor. My right arm is pretty fatigued from all of that hugging in. Good. And now keep the left hand really firm on the outer left leg and reach your right arm as far up behind you towards the ceiling as you can without collapsing in the shoulder. Keep pressing left hand firmly as you reach your right arm out to the side. Lift it up quite high, and then you'll circle the right arm alongside the right ear. Reach your wrists away from one another on a diagonal. Left wrist reaching further back, right wrist further forward. And then heavy the feet down, heavy the pubic bone down, 
and then you'll make your heart go forward and up as you lift into a Shalabhasana variation. Good. And imagine your right hand is pressing into something, the left hand very clearly having a connection to the outer left leg, like you're plugging a plug into a socket. Good, and then you'll slowly lower the right hand down, so the palm is down. Plant your left fingertips outside of your left ribs and use the left fingertips to help you roll over up to your right side. And then just replace the left hand on the outer left leg again. Press the leg up into the hand, hand into the leg, so that your left leg is hovering like just two inches off of your right leg. And then explore external rotation, the left kneecap and toes turn up towards the ceiling, turning from the thigh bone in the hip socket. And then you'll come right back to neutral, both eyes of your kneecaps looking straight in front of you. And then take your five little pulses, five, four, three, Press the hand firmly so you have a lot of feedback. One more, and then hold, pressing the leg as firmly as you can up to the hand, and then storing this in your muscle memory for later. No external rotation, as neutral as possible. Reaching out through the left heel. Okay, and then you'll sweep your left arm alongside your left ear and reach your wrists away from the crown of the head, your heels away from your sit bones. And just take one more breath, get yeah, as long as you can. Okay, you use your left fingertips on the mat to guide you back down onto the belly. Plant your hands by the sides of the ribs and come to a low cobra. Drag your hands energetically back and try to send the organ of the heart forward. Good, and make your legs really long. Take a breath in and then float your hands up and away from the floor as you exhale. Draw your elbows towards one another and a little higher to the ceiling, but heavy the pubic bone down in that position. And then keep heavy your pubic bone as you bend your knees slowly, draw the heels towards the seat. Good. The next breath in, you'll plant the hands down, keep the knees bent, and just come into a little bit more further forward with the heart, low cobra. Good. And then we'll make our way back into child's pose. I like to keep my knees bent as I roll back into child's pose. If that doesn't feel right for you, you straighten the legs on the way. And then one big breath, use it well here in your child's pose. Elongate the front spine. And then push down through the tops of the feet and the shins heavily as you roll up nice and light in the crown of the head. And then the next time you breathe in, float your arms up by your ears and then feel a lightness in your fingertips, almost like there's kind of sunlight shining through the tips of the fingers. And then a lightness in the top airy part of your lungs. And allow there to be a dense, almost like a darkness at the base of the lungs, heavying you down into the earth. And then take one more breath, even lighter in the fingertips, lighter in the top lungs. Then you'll float the hands together and press your hands together in a prayer at the center of the heart. And we'll begin with one om. Take a breath in. Softly bow the chin to the chest and feel sort of a yawning open at the back of the neck and a widening behind your heart. Then you'll release your hands down and we'll meet in a downward facing dog. Just a reminder to have a, a towel or a blanket there for your knees if you need them. Once you're in your down dog, you have about five breaths. You can pedal through your feet. And you could stay nice and still. And then let's take three more breaths together like this. You'll inhale well through the nose and exhale a wide breath out of the mouth. Maybe you stick out the tongue. Two more like that. Breathing in, fill the hips with breath as they lift higher. And a big wide breath out of the mouth. 
one more breathing in. And a calm exhale out of the mouth. Okay, on your inhale, bend your knees like they're almost going to touch the mat, but not quite. Keep your left knee this bent, but lift your right leg up like a three-legged down dog. But keep bending the left knee well. With your left knee bent, start to open up your right hip, and you can come high on your right fingertops. Imagine your right hand is pressing into your outer right leg as we did before and try to lift it a millimeter higher. And then look at your legs. They should sort of look like warrior two. If you really bend your left knee well so it's on the same line as your ankle. Good. And then just taking about one more breath, move your left knee away from your right ankle. Like a Baddha Konasana feeling. Good. And then slowly you'll re-square the hips and step your right foot down next to your left. Take an inhale and come forward to plank pose. And you'll exhale, step your left foot between your hands. Spin your right heel down. Your feet will be like warrior two. But walk your hands over towards the right long edge of your mat. Push down through your fingertips and really find warrior two in your legs. I like to reach under myself, grab my own left buttock bone and draw it down towards the floor. Slowly as you breathe in, straighten your left leg. Your legs will be like triangle pose. And then you'll re-bend the knee as you exhale, warrior two. Good, breathing in, straighten the leg. And breathe out back to warrior two. Good, one more like that. Push into your feet, straighten the left leg. And exhale, bend your left knee. Keep your left leg like it is. And then move your right foot so you'll turn the heels in, toes out, so it looks exactly like your left leg. So now you're in a goddess shape. Both knees bent out to the side, both toes turned out. Okay, take your time. Bring your hands up on tops of your thighs. Push your thighs away as you lift your chest up. Your shoulders might be shrugging by your ears. Try to push your femur bones down to the floor gently. And then take a breath in, fill up the upper light lobes of the lungs. And when you exhale, you're gonna to twist to the left, really pushing your right inner thigh away from you. And then you'll breathe in up through the center. And you'll exhale, press your left thigh away from you as you twist to the right. Good, turn back forward, breathe in, push through your heels, open your arms out to the sides. And then you'll exhale, turn to a low lunge to your left foot. Straighten through your left leg as you breathe in. Okay, listen, keep your left leg straight. Bend your right knee and lower it all the way down, either onto your blanket or your mat. So it's sort of like a runner's pose or a half Hanuman variation. Flex your left toes away from the floor. Dig your left heel down into the floor like you're digging through dirt. And pull your left heel energetically back towards the back edge of your mat. And then hover your arms out to the side. If that feels like too much, maybe you keep one hand down. Otherwise, both arms winging out to the sides. Push into the ball of your right foot and try to even out your hips. If you're not sure if they're even, you can bring your hands back and even them out. Probably your left outer hip needs to move back. One more breath. And then come all the way up to stand on your right knee. Hook your thumbs. Breathe in and lift the chest, lift your arms long, and you'll exhale and twist to your left, open the arms to a T. I found this balance really challenging. So go slowly, take a couple of breaths here. When you arrive, drag your left heel energetically to the back of the mat. Good. Take one more wide breath out through your fingertips. Okay, keep your spine long, hinge at your hips, and you'll lower your right fingertips underneath your shoulder on the mat. Reach your left arm up to twist towards the ceiling. And then you'll sweep your left arm alongside your left ear. Take one more breath. Reach both sit bones back behind you, but the heart forward. And then you'll lower your left fingertips under the left shoulder. Take your left knee and cross it in front of your right, and you'll just kind of wriggle or inch your knees and shins into the midline of your mat. So you're on all fours, but with the knees crossed. 
Okay, slowly take your right knee, send it straight back behind you without dumping your belly to the floor. And then like you're doing a circle with your right kneecap, circle the right knee way out to the side, also known as fire hydrant pose. And then you'll just thread the right leg in front of the left, the right knee in front of the left. Good, and then you'll take that on the left side, walk your hands forward a bit. I like to stay high on the finger tops. Send your left knee straight back. The belly flesh stays up in the low back curve. And then circle your left knee way out to the left, all the way around towards your left elbow. And then you'll thread the left knee in front of the right. So you're back on hands and knees with the knees crossed. Tuck your toes under and come to down dog with your ankles crossed. Send your hips up and back. Imagine you have another set of hands pressing into your outer hips like we did at the very start of class and pull your own hips up and back behind you. The next time you breathe in, come forward into plank pose. Keep both of your knees kind of bent so that you can have equal weight in both feet. It would be tempting to just put the weight in the left foot, but keep both feet pressing firmly down and compact your outer hips to the midline. Good, keep that feeling, inner thighs squeezing together as you lower all the way down to the floor. Reach your arms back, compact your outer hips, grab your hands onto your outer hips, just like we started, but now the legs are crossed. Squeeze the legs to the midline and come to Shalabhasana. Press your hands into the outer hips really well. Roll your shoulder heads away from the floor. Slowly lift your left arm up behind you, out to the side, and then alongside the ear, breathe in, press right hand to right leg. And then as you exhale, you'll lower onto your left side. Plant your right fingertips on the mat to roll over, just like we did at the start. Press your right hand into the outer right leg, lift the leg up. And then you'll lift it up a little bit higher. Press your right fingertips on the mat in front of your chest. And then send your right leg straight forward, like you're kicking a ball out in front of you. Bend your right knee. You'll come to lie down on the belly with your right knee bent out to the side. Draw your tailbone toward your left heel and come up into a sphinx pose in the arms. Press down through your elbows. Take a breath in. Draw your chest forward, pubic bone heavy. And then you'll tuck your left toes under. We're going to meet in forearm plank. Try to pick your right knee up off of the floor first and then send the leg back to forearm plank. In your forearm plank, without shifting too much to your right, bring your left arm back alongside your body. Press your left hand into the left leg, left leg into left hand. Good, and then you'll replace the left elbow back down. Walk your feet forward just a couple of inches and then bend your knees like they're about to land on the mat. Push into your hands, straighten your arms both at the same time. And then you'll walk your hands back into Downward Facing Dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take a breath here, smooth breath, wide. And exhale. Inhale, send your attention outwards, what's happening around you and the space around you. And then as you exhale, draw the attention inwards, what's happening interiorly. The next time you breathe in, bend your knees like they're about to land on the mat, but they don't quite. On your exhale, you'll lift the left leg up like a three-legged dog, but the right knee is really vigorously bent. Then you'll open up your left leg, and your feet will feel, and legs will feel sort of like warrior two. You can come high on your left finger tops if you wish. Good. Keep sending your inner right knee forward toward your right thumb and then try to turn open that left hip. Good, taking just about one more breath, try bending your right knee more. Look at your legs, see as close to warrior two as you can. And then you'll re-square the hips and step your left foot down next to your right in downward facing dog. Inhale to come forward in plank. Exhale, step your right foot forward in between your hands. Walk your hands over to the left so that they're outside of the long edge of your mat on the left side. And then have your legs like warrior two. Descend your pelvis. And then again, I like to reach under, grab my own right sit bone and draw it down towards the floor. 
You can always have your hands on blocks here if you need. Take one more breath. Press your right knee back away from you. And then slowly straighten the right leg. So the legs are like triangle. When you breathe out, you'll come back to warrior two. Inhale, press well to the pinky side of your right foot as you straighten the leg. Exhale, back to warrior two. One more like that. Breathe and push the floor away, straighten the leg. And exhale, re-bend your right knee. Okay, keep your right leg as it is. And you're gonna mimic the shape with the left leg. So you'll just bring the left foot a little closer under you. Turn the heels and toes out. Bend both knees, goddess pose. Keep your tailbone quite heavy. Plant your hands on the tops of the thighs. And then you'll lift your chest upright, your shoulders shrugging up by the ears. Dip your right shoulder into the midline as you turn to the left, pressing your right inner thigh away. Come back through the center, take a breath in. Other side, exhale, dip the left shoulder in, turn to your right. And take your breath in, come back to center. Float the arms out to the sides, dig through your heels, wide through the wings of the arms. And then we'll meet in a low lunge to your right foot on your exhalation. Slowly straighten through your right leg, breathe in. And then you'll just bend your left knee and lower it down onto your blanket or the mat. Okay. So dig your left heel down, excuse me, your right heel down into the mat. Pull it energetically back or isometrically. Good. And then even out your pelvis. Push the floor away with both of your feet. Maybe you hover both hands or one arm out to the side at a time. And then imagine someone is drawing your pelvis back as you're pulling your heart forward. So it's like your spine is parallel to the floor. Take one more breath. Try to reach the fingertips a little further out to the sides. And then really press through your feet to come upright in the chest. Okay, hook your thumbs overhead. Take a breath in. Lift the front belly up towards your heart. Get even taller as you exhale and twist to the right, moving slowly with the precarious balance. Okay, and then energetically push the right heel down into the floor and drag it back and try to revolve from above the waistline. Good, one more breath, breathe in like this. And then slowly hinge forward. Trust that the floor is there for your left fingertips or your block. And you'll be in a revolved twist. It'll feel kind of like a revolved triangle on the knee. Slowly reach the right arm alongside the right ear. Take another breath in. Keep your left buttock up as high to the ceiling as the right side. And you'll lower your right fingertips down. Stay high in the fingertips and thread your right knee in front of your left. And then just move your legs around until they're right at the center of your mat, like hands and knees. And then this time with a straight leg, straighten your left leg back behind you. Try to circle it way out to the side for fire hydrant. And then you'll bend the knee and cross your left knee in front of the right. Inch your hands forward a bit. Straight right leg behind you. Keep it neutral, belly up towards the spine and then circle the leg way out around without shifting your chest over to the left too much. Right leg threads in front of the left. Good, you'll plant your hands, come to your cross-legged down dog, and imagine that set of hands plugging the palms into your outer hips well. Inner thighs hug together as a result. The next breath in, come forward into plank and try to keep the weight equal in the ball of both feet. That means you might need to bend your knees. When you exhale, lower slowly down onto the mat. You'll inhale, hook your ankles in this cross position, reach your arms behind you and squeeze the hips to the midline with your palms. You'll lift your right leg up high, excuse me, right arm up high behind you out to the side and then alongside the right ear. Good, lower the right hand down, plant your left fingertips to roll onto your side. Unhook the ankles, you'll press your outer left thigh up into your left hand vigorously. And lift it up a little higher and send your left leg 
straight forward, kick it in front of you, plant your left fingertips on your mat if you need to for balance. And then you'll bend your left knee, roll onto the belly, your left knee is bent out to the side, come to a sphinx pose in the arms. Take your breath in, pubic bone down, tail towards your right heel. Then tuck your right toes under, try to hover your left knee in this position away from the floor, and then come to your forearm plank. Without shifting to the left too much, reach your right arm alongside the body, press the hand to the leg, leg to the hand, and then you'll lower the right forearm back down. Walk your feet forward a couple of inches, and then bend your knees like they're about to touch the floor. Straighten both arms at the same time, and then we'll meet back in downward facing dog. Good, we're gonna flow through that a little bit different, similar. So on your inhale, bend your knees to hover above the mat. Exhale, lift your right leg up. Breathe in, open up the right hip, think warrior two. And on your exhale, step the right foot next to your left and down dog. Breathe in, come forward into plank. You'll exhale, step the left foot between your hands. Warrior two in your legs, but crawl your hands around on the floor. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, straighten the left leg like triangle. Breathe in, re-bend your left knee and bend your right knee, both legs in goddess position. On your exhale, heavy the tail and lift the chest upright, open the arms wide. Different arms this time. Right arm under the left, eagle wrap them and you'll breathe in, lift your elbows. Move the forearms away from the nose. One more breath. Curl your elbows towards your tailbone like they're magnetized towards one another. And then you'll lower the hands to frame your left foot as you exhale and low lunge. Breathe in, straighten the left leg, lift the left toes off the mat. Exhale, bend just your right knee until it comes all the way down. I like to keep my toes tucked. Inhale, hover the arms out to the side, and then lift them by the ears as you come up. You'll exhale, take a big twist to the left. Right hand under the right shoulder as you breathe in, sweep your left arm alongside the left ear. And on your exhale, you'll cross your left knee in front of the right, hands and knees, all fours. Good, breathe in, circle your right leg behind you, keep the leg straight as you circle it around. On the exhale, you'll thread the right knee in front of the left. Walk the fingertips forward, left leg straight, breathe in, circle it all the way around and thread the leg through. Good, you'll take your next inhale to a cross-legged downward facing dog. Exhale, keep the legs crossed as you come forward and all the way down to the belly. This time, inhale, just reach your arms alongside the ears and squeeze your legs to the midline, Shalabhasana, pubic bone heavy. You'll exhale, plant your hands, uncross the legs, heavy the feet on the mat. Breathe in, maybe you come up higher, maybe it feels a little more like up dog, and you'll exhale back into downward facing dog. Left side, breathe in, bend your knees almost to the mat. Exhale, left leg up behind you. Inhale, open up the pelvis, think warrior two. And you'll exhale, step the left foot next to the right and down dog. Breathe in to plank pose. Exhale, step the right foot forward. Warrior two in the legs, keep your hands down on the floor as you crawl them over, breathing in. And then you'll exhale, straighten your right leg like triangle pose. Inhale, re-bend the knee, draw your buttock down towards the floor. And then you have an exhale to come to goddess shape with the legs as you roll your way up. Arms out to the sides, breathe in. We'll do left arm under the right this time, eagle wrap. Move the forearms away from the nose, try to lift the elbows but soften the shoulders. The next exhalation, elbows magnetized toward the tailbone, so there is a feeling of tucking under gently. Release the hands to frame your right foot on your exhale, low lunge. Breathe in, straighten your right leg and lift the toes and ball the foot off the mat. Exhale, lower your left knee down. 
Breathe in, float the arms out and then up. You'll exhale, twist to your right, open the arms wide. Left finger tops under the shoulder, breathe in, the right arm comes over the right ear. Exhale, lower your right fingertips, cross the right knee in front of the left. You have an inhale to circle the left leg all the way around, bent or straight. Try not to move the rib cage or the pelvis too much. Isolate the movement just to the femur moving. We'll meet back with the right knee in front of the left. Downward facing dog with your legs crossed, hips high. Hug the thighs to the midline. Come forward as you exhale, lowering all the way down to the floor. Squeeze the legs together, float the arms up by the ear, Shalabhasana, breathing in. You'll exhale to uncross the legs, plant the hands, and then any size backbend when you breathe in. Adho Mukha, downward facing dog on your exhale. And then take a breath in through the nose. Fill the lungs all the way up behind your collarbones. Exhale out of the mouth, soften your jaw, your eyes a little more. Then you'll either walk or hop your feet up to the top of the mat. When you arrive, take a breath in, stretch your chest forward. Exhale, fold softly into the legs and imagine you could soften your brain. Breathe in, light up the legs, lift your arms up high. And exhale, come to mountain pose. Inhale, circle the arms out and up. You'll exhale, dive forward over the legs. Take your inhale, chest forward. Exhale, hop or step. Chaturanga, you'll do right and then left if you're stepping. Either chaturanga or hands and knees. Breathe in any size back bend, including cow spine. Exhale, either child's pose or downward facing dog. And take about three more breaths here. Can you free up your tailbone, your coccyx? It's a light little bone, like we had the lightness in the fingertips. Imagine your tail could feel very light. But at the same time, can you draw your sit bones towards your second toe mound? So both of those opposite actions happening at once. Okay. And the next time you breathe out, you'll hop or step your way to the top, right foot and left foot. Take a smooth breath in right to the heart center as it goes forward. Exhale softly into your legs. Inhale, circle the arms up, put a little more weight in your heels. And exhale, come to mountain pose. Breathe in, float the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Breathe in, chest forward. Exhale, hop or step. This will be left and then right. Chaturanga or hands and knees. Any size back bend as you inhale. Strong legs. Breathe out Adho Mukha Shmanasana. And then again about three very slow breaths. As long as you can make them without forcing or a feeling of panic. And maybe for this last breath or so, observe the transition from the bottom of your exhale as it transitions into an inhalation. At the bottom of the next exhale, stay empty of breath, look forward, either hop or step left and then right. Now a smooth breath in, long spine, Exhale, fold, soften the brain a little more. Breathe in, circle your arms overhead. And exhale into mountain. Two more on your own. You can follow along with me if you don't know it. I'll be doing it here. I just won't instruct it. If there's some other movement you prefer, take that. Maybe a rest, pigeon.
You have about another minute left. That's time for another round or switch sides if you're taking something like pigeon. In about three breaths, we're going to meet at the back edge of your mat in a forward fold. So you could go there from your last down dog, or if you're already at the top of the mat, just um, come back to down dog and walk your hands back. About two or so more breaths. When you arrive, Try to be as soft in the muscles of the neck as possible. So for me, it helps to kind of shake the head yes and shake the head no. And then you'll either round or hinge your way up to stand. Okay, once you're standing, find your bearings. Stack the center of the skull over the center of your pelvic floor as best as you can tell. Okay, so lift your right arm up alongside your right ear and press your left hand into your outer left leg. Okay, keep the pressure really firm, leg to hand. And then you're going to reach up first and then over to half moon pose. We're not staying long. Bend your right knee so that it's a little more of an inquiry. When my knee is bent, I'm still searching instead of thinking I have the answer with a really straight knee. Take one more breath. Press your left leg up into your left hand. Good. And then you're going to reverse your steps so you'll come right back up. Hover your left foot next to your right. Switch arms. The left arm will come up. Your right hand will press into the right thigh. And then take a step just about a quarter of the way down your mat. And then we'll take the same thing. Press your right leg into your right hand. If I tried to separate them, you wouldn't let me. With a soft left knee, tip your way into half moon. Try turning your heart a little more so the left lung curls underneath the right lung. Press your right leg up into your right hand. No external rotation if you can help it. Good. Take one more breath. Okay, and then reverse your steps. Push into your left heel to come right up to stand, right foot hovering next to left foot. And then you'll switch the arms. We're going to do one more each side. So you'll step another quarter of the way down to your mat like you're almost starting a slow motion cartwheel. Tip your way into half moon, left leg up into left hand. We're just staying one breath in this time. Try to turn your right lung under your left lung and then come right back up, reverse your steps. It's very wobbly for me, good for the brain. Left arm up, right hand presses into outer right leg. You're at the top of your mat, slow motion cartwheel into half moon. Press leg into hand, you have just one breath. Pause, and then you'll come right back up where you came from. Right foot hovers a moment. And then you'll step right foot next to the left. Come right away into chair pose as you breathe in. On your exhale, forward fold. If you have blocks, I recommend them on the lowest height underneath your hands in the front corners of your mat. If you don't, don't worry, you'll be just fine. Okay, from here, hop or step your way back to down dog, no vinyasa. On your inhalation, send your right leg up behind you. Exhale, step towards your right thumb. Warrior one, as you breathe in, lift the arms. Exhale, low lunge, empty of breath. Hop, switch your feet. Take a breath in, and you'll exhale, hop. Again, switching the feet, take a breath in. 
On the exhale, scoop the belly once more. You hop, switch the feet. Spin your right heel down and come all the way up to warrior two. Breathing in, keep the hips low. And under exhalation, either chaturanga or you come to hands and knees. Hands can be on the blocks the whole time. Breathing in, back bend. And breathe out, downward facing dog. The left leg comes up as you breathe in. Exhale, step to the left thumb. Warrior one, breathing in. And on your exhale, come to low lunge. Empty of breath. Hop, switch the feet, try to lift the hips high. Take a breath in, land, wake up the legs. At the exhale, you'll hop, switch once again. One more, breathing in. And exhale, lift your hips high to switch. Good, warrior two, ground your left heel down, lift the arms, breathing in. And you'll exhale, vinyasa if you want one. You can modify any way you'd like. You have an inhale for a back bend. And exhale into downward facing dog. Take one more inhale here, prepare. You'll exhale, either hop or step your feet up to the top of the mat. Right away, inhale, come to chair pose. And you'll exhale, fold right back forward. Breathe in, stretch your chest forward. Exhale, hop or step, come to downward facing dog. Inhale, your right leg up. Exhale, step to the right thumb. Warrior one, breathing in. Breathe out, low lunge. Just one time, empty of breath. Hop switch, try to straighten your legs in the switch. Warrior two, as you breathe in, the left knee will be bent. And you'll exhale, vinyasa if you want one, or maybe you hold plank, breathing in. And breathe out, down dog. Left leg up, breathe in. Exhale, step to the left thumb. Warrior one, breathe in. Exhale, low lunge, empty of breath. Hop and switch. Warrior two, as you inhale, right knee is bent. Exhale, vinyasa, or hold and plank, breathing in. Exhale to down dog. Inhale, prepare. And you'll exhale, hop or step to the top of the mat. Right away into chair pose, breathing in. And you'll fold right back forward as you breathe out. Long spine, breathe in. Exhale, hop or step, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step forward. Warrior one, as you breathe in. Exhale, low lunge, empty of breath, hop, switch. Warrior two, as you breathe in. Vinyasa, if you'd like, on the exhale. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, adhonga. Left leg up, breathe in. Exhale, step to the thumb, warrior one on an inhalation. Exhale, low lunge, be patient, really truly empty of breath, hop and switch, catch a little Uriana Bandha if you know it. Warrior two on your inhalation. Exhale, vinyasa, or skip it. Meet us in down dog. Okay, so you have an option to do that all once more on your own, or you can rest in child's pose. So we'll hop or step to the top unless you're resting. Inhale to chair, and then you're on your own. I'll be doing it here if you get lost, but it's okay if you make stuff up too.
When you're finished, meet us in down dog or in child's pose. You still have time, about five or six breaths. Next couple of breaths, land in your shape. So it's either down dog or child's pose. Sort of resetting the breath and the nervous system before we do a final round, kind of revisiting what we did at the start of class. Two more breaths, slowing the heart rate. Slackening through the muscles of the face and the neck as best you can. In the next breath or so, meet us up at the top of the mat. And you'll place your blocks on the highest height in front of your mat. No problem if you don't have them. You know, Maybe you're using books or nothing at all. It's just fine. You do have them shoulder width in front of your mat. And then we'll come up to stand. All right, so last round, standing. Okay, so you're gonna bring your left hand behind your head. It's like the elbow sticking out to the side. Oh, I lied, right hand behind your head, excuse me. And left hand pressing into your left thigh. So this kind of theme that we've had all class. Start to lift your chest up, try to lift the back of the skull up, press your skull into your hand like it's a wall. And then lift up and over your right hip as you tip towards half moon pose. Activate the left leg, pressing into the left hand and lean your head back into your own hand. Eventually the block is there if you want it or the floor for your right hand down. And then keep pressing your left leg up into your left hand, so much so that it might help you to turn your right lung under your left lung. Good, imagine your right side of your face is landing on a really comfortable pillow. And then press your left leg up into your left hand even more, but float your left hand up to the ceiling. Imagine your left leg still has that feedback though. You're not externally rotating the leg. In fact, your inner left thigh is almost spinning behind you. And then can you tell if the back of your skull is in line with the back of your sacrum, which also is in line with your left heel? Good, you're gonna take just about one more breath and play with, again, the inquiry in the leg. So you're not locked in a straight answer, but they're searching. Okay, and then slowly you'll pass through a supported warrior three. Cross your left ankle behind your right ankle so your legs are crossed at the top of the mat and softly fold your head forward over your legs. Okay, plant your finger tops and step your left leg back so you'll be in a low lunge. And then one more time, you're gonna hop switch, this time without the box. And then come to warrior two in your legs. Walk your hands around like we did before. Maybe grab the left buttock, draw it underneath yourself. And then make your stance wider than usual. Play with it so that you almost feel a little bit off balance or like it's something you've not done before. Keep your hips this low. Try to have your left buttock as low to the ground as your left knee. And then push through your feet and come up to warrior two. For me, it feels very different. But if any of that doesn't feel right, you come back to your regular warrior two. Curl your left sit bone underneath you. Take one more breath. Bring your right hand to your outer right leg. Push leg into hand, hand into leg. As you come back into peaceful warrior, tipping over. Good, and then you'll come back upright, straighten your left leg. Lay your left ear on your left bicep. Press your right hand into your outer right hip so it's hugging, helping you hug to the midline and you'll come to a floating triangle. But compress your outer right hip to the midline so you're not sinking there. Good, and then crawl your left fingertips further away. 
make your left wrist longer and try to turn your left heart under the right part of the heart. One more breath, press through your legs, hug your feet together on the mat energetically. Good, and then you'll come to a low lunge to your left foot. Plant your right hand a little bit in front of your right shoulder. Turn to a side plank, it could be supported or both legs straight. Maybe you wanna try hovering the left leg. Imagine the left leg pressing into your left hand. Good, taking just about two more breaths. Again, any variation, I'm sort of showing a modified variation of the left hand, foot down. Press your outer right foot down into the floor. Good, and then you'll come through plank pose and slowly lower all the way down to the floor. Okay, reach your arms back, hug your outer hips with your hands. And then you'll keep pressing the left hand into the left leg, sweep your right arm up alongside your right ear. Good, Shalabhasana, float your legs up. If your block is there, you can put the pinky side of your right hand on your block and use it to press down into to get really long. But again, if you don't have the block, don't worry. Okay, you'll slowly lower down. Plant your left fingertips on your mat to help you roll over onto the left side. Have your right palm facing the floor. Crawl your right fingertips very far away from you and make your left leg longer than your right leg. Left hand on top of the outer left leg and lift the leg. Keep it neutral. So try not to turn the leg out. It'll be very tempting. If you need to, you plant your left fingertips on the floor in front of you. Otherwise, your left hand might be sliding up the outer left leg. Try not to collapse your tail back behind you. Keep your front belly sort of tethered up towards your heart. Now externally rotate the leg once you get it up as high as you'd like, and you'll yogi toe lock your left big toe. And this is a precarious balance, so if you need to, you keep your left hand down in front of you. Good. Keep the, the yogi toe lock of the left big toe, and just slowly be comfortable with coming off of your mat, because we're about to do so. You're going to roll onto your back. Your right arm will be up alongside your right ear, the left leg up to the ceiling. It could be bent or it can be straight anywhere between those two places. Good, now bring your right arm alongside the right body so your right hand is pressing into your outer right leg and press really firmly, hand into leg. Take a breath in and then as you exhale, push your left foot up to the ceiling and see if you can come all the way up to sit without using your right hand. The right hand is pressing into the right leg, but if you need it, you press down into the floor. And then come upright. Can you heavy your left sit bone so it's as heavy to the earth as your right? And then you're gonna switch hands so your right yogi toe walk around the left big toe. Scissor your right femur bone deep back into the hip socket. Lift your left arm up, breathe in and then get taller. Try not to lean back at all in the chest as you twist open to the left. Reach your left heel far, far, far away from you. And then you can play a little game with your sit bones. What does it feel like to slide my right sit bone back? What does it feel to slide my left sit bone back? And get even taller. Take one more breath in. Okay. Lean back just a little bit. Pick your right leg up and see if you can be in a revolved Navasana here. Pressing your right hand into your outer left shin. The knees could be bent like this as well. Take one more breath. Revolve, revolve, revolve. Okay, so you're going to straighten your legs. Just roll onto the belly like you're on your forearms and sphinx pose. And then... We'll come into a forearm plank, and then my favorite cue that I learned from Patricia Towson, um, imagine your lungs are pitchers filled with water. And now as you pike your hips up, you're pouring all of the water out of the pitchers 
into dolphin pose. Walk your feet forward. The higher you lift your hips, the more water you can pour out of the, the pitchers of the lungs. Good. Take just one more breath, pushing down through the forearms. Okay, and then you'll lower the knees. Come back to child's pose. You have a breath. And then we'll make our way back up to the top of the mat. You could come through down dog. Any way you want to get there. Last side to go. You'll either round or hinge your way up to stand. And then stand tall, get your bearings, find your orientation here. Press your right hand into the outer right leg, left hand to the back of the skull. Draw especially the lower part of your skull back into your thumb. Keep that connection, keep the connection of right hand to right leg. And then you'll start to tip into your half moon pose. The head presses back to the left hand. The right leg pushes up into your right hand. Eventually you have a block there, if you'd like it, under the left side. And then can you tell if you're externally rotating the right leg, in other words, right knee and right toe up to the ceiling. Instead, send your inner right thigh behind you. Press the outer leg up into the hand firmly. And see if that pressure helps you turn a little more, then you'll float your right arm up maybe for a traditional half moon Ardha Chandrasana. Maybe you look up to your right hand with your left eye. And then can there still be a sense of inquiry even if you've sort of nailed the balance? The limbs are, are floating and fluid and alive, not overly tight and rigid. Okay, you'll slowly lower the right hand down, square the pelvis, and cross your right ankle behind your left ankle. You'll be in a cross ankle uttanasana, and let the head hang heavy. That was our last standing pose, by the way. No, it wasn't. I lied. A little more to go. Right leg back, and then you'll come high on the fingertops and hop, switch your feet. Walk your hands over to the left side of your mat. And press down through your feet. And again, just for a little variety of movement, what does it feel like to make your warrior two stance really wide? Draw your right buttock bone down especially. Try to keep your feet super wide, hips low, as you lift up to warrior two. A little new information for the brain if this is something you've not done before. Good. And then a slow, peaceful warrior, left hand to the outer left leg, right arm up. And then you'll come up through the center and straighten through your legs. You'll shorten the stance a little bit. Press your left hand into the outer left leg. Right ear almost rests on the right bicep. And then hinge your way to triangle. But the pressure of your left hand reminds you not to hike in that hip and sink in the joint. Compact your outer left hip to the midline. And reach, 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 reach. Right wrist, right long, longer. Good. You have about one more breath. This really is our last standing pose. Give it all of your attention. Okay. And then you'll slowly lower the hands to a low ledge to your right foot. Okay. So we'll come to side plank on the left hand, left foot. Again, it can be supported. Or you stack the legs and try hovering your right leg as though you're picking your right leg up into your right hand. Try not to externally rotate and stay with it about two more slow breaths. Soften your tongue a little more and the eyes. Okay, and then you'll come back through plank pose, right leg back in line with the left. And then you'll lower your way all the way down. Okay, so your left arm will come up alongside your left ear, right hand to outer right leg, lifting up Shalabhasana. Make the inseams of the legs longer. 
you can press the outer edge of your left hand down onto a block. It feels really nice to sort of help lift the chest up a little. Good, pubic bone down, abdominal tissues up towards your spine. Okay, and then you'll come out of that, but keep the left arm straight forward by the ear. Plant your right fingertips, and you'll roll over onto your right side. Okay, so make your right leg longer than your left. Reach through the heel. Press the leg up into the hand, and then you'll start lifting the leg. Don't let it turn out. See if you can keep a neutral leg as you lift the leg to any height. Your right hand will sort of slide up the outer seam of your right leg. Once you get it to the top, then externally rotate. So the knee, right knee and right toes sort of point in the same direction as your left fingertips. And then you'll, you'll be toe off the right big toe. And notice if your tail is sticking way back behind you, try to hug it underneath yourself. Right buttock underneath you, just like we did in Warrior Two. Okay, and now you're going to be rolling off your mat. It's okay. Roll onto your floor, and you'll be on the center of the back. Right back of the pelvis as heavy to the earth as the left side. Left arm up alongside the left ear. Just take one more breath like this. And then you'll bring your left arm down by your side. Press the left hand into the outer left leg. Good, take a breath in, and then push your right foot up to the ceiling as you exhale, chin to chest. See if you can come all the way up to sit without using your left hand. Good, and then once you're there, sit up tall. You might bend your right elbow, and try to be um, level in your sit bones. Equal weight, left to right side. And then you'll lift the left arm up to get taller and taller. As you switch, left fingertips come around, right big toe. Now right arm comes up. Use the lifting of the arm to lengthen your spine. Get even taller as you twist to the right and exhale. Good. Try not to lean back at an angle, but could you sit up tall? And then play with sliding left sit bone forward and then right sit bone forward. See how it feels for you. Okay, one more breath. Now lean back like someone's pulling your right wrist back a little bit. And then let go of the foot. Lift up your left leg and see if you can be in a revolved Navasana. Press the back of the left hand into your outer right leg. Lift your chest up. Good, maybe you bend the knees. One more breath. Great, and then you're gonna roll onto your forearms. This is your Sphinx pose. If you want to take dolphin, that's one option. Maybe you want forearm stand. You don't really warm up for forearm stand, but if you're into it, do it. Otherwise, um, you'll take a little rest with me. You'll open your elbows out to the sides. Plant your hands underneath the forehead like a little pillow. And then let your legs turn in so the heels sort of spin out. And this will just be for about a minute. So those of you in forearm stand, take your time. And if you're lying here on the belly, can you imagine with each inhalation that the low back gets so full that it almost feels like it's reversing the curve of the spine? And when you exhale, feel your whole body sort of give in and yield a little more to gravity's pull. And then you might sway your hips a little bit side to side. You have just about three or four more breaths like this. So my forearm standers come into Child's pose in the next couple of breaths. Okay, so those of you on your belly will come back into child's pose. Take your time. 
Press your seat back towards your heels. And then just a couple breaths here in child's pose. Okay, and then we will all meet lying on the back. So you could roll up to sit and then shift your seat over or any way you like to come into your child's, uh, your, onto your back. When you get there, you'll draw your knees in towards your chest. And then take happy baby pose. You could either grab onto the shins or grab onto the outer edges of the feet. And then I like to roll a little bit side to side. You might play with an anterior and posterior tilt of the pelvis. In other words, kind of cat-cow. It will be minimal movement, but for me, it feels um, profound. And then you'll once again, in the next breath or so, draw the knees into the chest and maybe kind of wag your tail a little bit side to side. And then we'll do just a little bit of breathing before you come into your Shavasana. So however you're most comfortable in your legs, it might be like constructive rest, feet down, knees up, or the legs straight in front of you. And then you'll bring your right thumb to your outer right nostril, and then your fourth finger to the outer left nostril. Your pointer finger and your middle finger are sort of folding in. Close off the left nostril and breathe in slowly through the right side, three, two, one, seal the right, retain the breath a moment. And you'll exhale out of the left, three, two, one, pause, empty. Inhale, left, three, two, one, seal it off, stay full. And you'll exhale out of the right, three, two, one, Pause, empty. Very gradually and smoothly sip the breath in the right side. Three, two, one. Seal it off. Stay full. Soften your jaw and your eyes. Calmly breathe out of the left. Three, two, one. Pause, empty. Calmly sip the breath in left, three, two, one. Seal it closed, stay full without tension. And softly out of the right, three, two, one. So you're welcome to continue like that. As long as you'd like, we'll eventually land in Shavasana When you transition to Shavasana, breathe in well through both nostrils at the same time so that you are um, coming back, shifting from one side or the other and bringing it back to a whole. Give yourself a moment to notice and sort of bask in any energy shift you may have created from the Nadi Shodhana breath.
If you would like to stay in your Shavasana longer, um, you can just kind of mute my voice and stay and linger as long as you'd like. If you're coming up with me, take a couple of deep breaths here. Try to push the floor beneath you away with your inhales. When you roll over onto your side, either side, imagine your elbows and your knees were magnetized towards one another so that you kind of curl up in a nice little ball that they don't have to actually touch but draw them in. Take another breath on your side and you'll eventually make your way up to a seated position of your choice. And once you're seated, you can bring the palms together at the center of the chest. And then we'll finish with one ohm all together. Take a breath in. Thank you so much, everybody.